Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to GE Power India Limited's earnings conference call for the third quarter of FY 2022-23. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference, please signal an operator star than zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Prashant Jain, Managing Director, GE Power India Limited. Thank you, and over to you, sir. A very good evening and warm welcome to all of you for joining this discussion on the financial and operational performance for the third quarter of the financial year. Before we dive into the quarterly performance, I would like to welcome my team who is joining me to answer your questions and update performance uh, in across various verticals. I have with me Yogesh Gupta, our whole time director and CFO, Mr. Vinit Pant, our chief commercial officer, and Mr. Raj Raman, executive projects uh, on the call with me. I would like to start with the global economy uh, with some context on the global situation. The year 2022 turned out to be tough for the global markets with volatility in commodity prices, that dictated the central bank activities in most of the countries, thereby impacting the growth trajectory worldwide in the world trade. Surge in inflation due to hike in commodity prices, including crude oil and gas, led to global slowdown as major economies witnessed cut down in retail consumption growth. However, the first two quarters of the year also saw a major energy crisis, primarily in Europe, but with impacts beyond due to cut in supply of gas from Russia to the European Union. Due to global economic slowdown and projected recessionary fears, the World Bank has revised the world GDP growth at 1.7% for 2023 compared to 3% earlier in its latest global economic outlook report. With global energy crisis, we also witnessed a revival in growth of coal-powered electricity generation as Surging gas prices and insufficient renewable energy forced countries to rely on traditional thermal power to meet the growing demand of electricity. This was the global context, what happened in the Indian economy and Indian power sector. In the Indian context, the World Bank has revised GDP growth for 22-23 to 6.9% as against 6.5% projected in October 2022. According to the World Bank, the Indian economy is better poised to combat external environment pressure and economic fundamentals are in good place compared to other emerging market economies. As far as the energy sector is concerned, the country's reliance on coal as a traditional fuel has gone up since the pandemic. Though coal contributes close to 50% of India's installed capacity, its contribution to generation is close to 80%. This is a clear indicator that significance of coal for power generation is undisputable, at least for the next few years to come. The situation in India is similar to Europe, where high natural gas prices led to a stronger reliance on coal for electricity generation. The coal price globally has been impacted due to the Russia and Ukraine conflict, Russia being the third largest coal exporter has disrupted the global coal trade, and this has impacted the import price for Indian players as well. India's coal imports during the 2022 grew 14.7% at 161.18 million tons. The domestic production, too, has grown by 17% to 524 million metric tons during the April-November 2022, compared to 448 MP in the corresponding period of last year. This also was a blessing for India as India largely relies on domestic coal. India has been, to an extent, protected on the electricity tariffs against the world tariffs because 80% of the generation is still coming from coal. And that has prevented, as far as domestic coal is concerned, certain amount of inflation in the domestic markets. 
Coming to the fuel gas desulfurization business in India, the segment ordered 20 gigawatt compared to 7 gigawatt during the same period the previous year, which means that the market is higher this year as compared to last year. But the expectation that we had was about 30 gigawatts against which we saw 20 gigawatts. So in summary, the market is bigger than last year, again, 7 gigawatts, 30 gigaw 20 gigawatts. But our expectation was a 30 gigawatt market uh, in the period uh, so far in nine months. The segment is seeing this slowdown as the deadline for it. I would not say slowdown, but I would say that certain orders have been delayed as the deadline for uh, coal gas coal-based power plants to implement emission standards has been extended by two years. What does this mean uh, on GE Power India operations? The turnaround for GE Power India operations is taking longer than we had expected. And one of the reasons is the slowness in the market. For example, the regulatory two-year delay of the mandate to implement SG technology, but also the upgrades. Power producers are currently running their assets at full load to benefit from high demand. And they are getting a very good price level for power. And thus, they are delaying shutdown to implement upgrades. And therefore, there is a delay in CapEx. This, we believe, is of temporary nature. And we are expecting upgrades to pick up in the midterm. Overall, we have seen an uptick in the market, with the market size of LGD being larger than at the same time last year. Which is why our and which is of course lower than the level that we were anticipating, and which is why the orders have gone down from 2.6 billion in Q3 of 21 uh, to 1.5 billion in the Q3 of the current fiscal year. You can see on the page four in the slide, most of the decrease comes from uh, order intake from uh, the LGD segment. Since FGD and upgrades are continuing to come in low, in we are using our existing backlog, and therefore the mitigation actions that we are taking are on two fronts. One, adjusting the load at the Durgapur factory, uh, and we have done another round of restructuring towards that in the current quarter. And the second is on the Give me a second, please. And second with is on focusing on very tight control on the SG and day. At the same time, we are mindful of the fact that we need to keep the right level of competence for us to deliver on our future strategy. On the strategy in general, on growing core services, we are seeing good progress. We have been growing and we are expecting to close the fiscal year in the double digit range. On the core service execution side, we are doing very well with high levels of productivity. So this is a good part of the strategy that continues to be attractive. On the new build side, we are continuing to execute the equipment projects from our backlog. And the risks we have seen are from commodity price inflation and supply chain disruptions as a result of the geopolitical instability. And our actions to mitigate this risk include measures to protect the margin during execution and ensuring a mitigation provision in new orders, as well as looking at alternative sources for key commodities and components. While these actions are aiming at keeping our business sustainable on the long term, these risks include factors that are outside our control being faced by the entire industry sector. We, as well as the sector, have made joint representations and representations to the ministry and customers for exceptional one-time relief. Timing of such a relief is, of course, subject to the discretion of ministry and the customers, which we are constantly engaging with. If I have to summarize the executive summary on the Q3, um, first, I would like to highlight that for G Power, the year 2022 is a milestone year as we marked 120 years of presence in the country. And this year is embarking on a significant energy transition journey. The turnaround for G Power India Limited operations is taking longer than expected due to order intake of LGDs and upgrades being lower than anticipated. We are taking actions by restructuring and adjusting the load at our Durgapur factory and by reducing our operational cost and SGNA. Code services 
we see good progress and we are growing and we expect to close the fiscal year in double digit range. So that's uh, the summary in nutshell. And for discussing financial operations, I will now call upon our CFO Yogesh um, to open, and then we will, of course, open for uh, question and answers. So over to you, Yogesh. Thank you, Prashant. Good evening, everyone. And I'm pleased to welcome you today to discuss our financial and operational performance for the third quarter and on 31st. Lower than expected industry demand and subsequent lower order intake in the last few years has impacted our revenue and margin for the quarter. Revenue for Q3 23 stood at 532.7 crore, down from 757 crores in the corresponding period of last year. Whereas the revenue in Q3 Q2 23 is higher than the revenue of 427.8 crores in Q2 23. CBT has been impacted because of lower volume, project cost updates, mainly for two projects, uh, Solapur and Jharja, and exceptional items for rationalization of Durgapur manufacturing facility amounting to 10.7 crores. Loss before tax for Q3 23 is lower at rupees 30.1 crores against a loss of 46.2 crores in Q3 of the current fiscal year and 112.5 crores in Q2 of 23. Structural costs in the first nine months of the current year have gone down, but there has been under recovery due to lower volumes, thereby lower capacity utilization. Loss after tax for Q3 23 was 139.9 crore against loss of 34.5 crore in Q3 FY22. The increase in loss after tax is due to the treatment of deferred tax assets. The, the carry forward amount of the deferred tax assets has been reviewed by the company management. And considering the recent financial performance of the company, lower order intake than expected, and delay in order backlog execution, the management has taken a conservative view as per the accounting standards, the charge of the deferred tax assets of 109.7 crores during the quarter ended 31st December 22. During the quarter, the company got orders worth 152.1 crores against uh, rupees 264.7 crores in Q3 FY22. As of December 31st 22, we have an order backlog of 4,020 crores. This is on the financial front. A brief summary. Now we are open for Q&A. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Participants who wish to ask a question may kindly press star 1 on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Please press star 1 to ask a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Danish Mystery from Investor First Advisors. Can you proceed? So hi, um, uh, thank you for taking my question. I had a couple of questions. Um, one is that if I were to see this time your other expenses have gone up, um, why on uh, year on year? So is that in some ways related to um, the uh, nine core uh, extra impact that we have taken on account of solar pool? That's question number one. Uh, sorry, can you repeat please? The other expenses, so if you were to see uh, our console numbers, so uh, other expenses in December 21 was 51 crores, and in December 22 was 69.9, roughly 70 crores. So we are up about 40%. So this is on account of any one time expenses that we have done, or is the 70 crore number that now we have to work with in other expenses? And what are these other expenses? Well, uh, I would take this question. Uh, on this, uh, like uh, that 9.7 crores at one time is not in the other expenses. Okay. Yes. And uh, what uh, is the reason for uh, the increase from 500 times mm -hmm. in the INR? 
growth of 588 million INR is increased. Mm-hmm. If we look at our performance in Q3 2122, we had a bad debt provision right back of 94 million, whereas this year we had to create additional provision of 83 million. So this limited uh, impact of about 177 million. And uh, the second major reason has been the net loss on foreign currency front. Uh, this uh, quarter, uh, in the current year, we have had an impact of 87 million, whereas last year there was no impact. The rest uh-huh. other like, small like, tickets uh, uh, in the range of about uh, plus minus uh, 10 to 15 million. Uh-huh. So this 94 number of Solapur comes where? Uh, this has been there in our uh, cost of material, or we can say in the cost. Uh, basically, this is impacting the project. And this is on account of uh, the insurance uh, uh, like uh, that will be finally covered. Uh, uh, because of the estimate in the survey, we realize that this additional cost impact will come. Understood, understood. And I remember a couple of quarters ago, we had also taken some uh, cost write off on account of that uh, hydro project in Odisha. So has that project started off for us now? Yeah. Hydro project in Odisha? I... Uh, so if, you're, if you're referring, yeah, if you're referring to Subanchari project, yeah, yeah. yes, Subanchari, yeah. So, Subanchari, yeah. so yes, there is a there is a good progress on the project. The project is uh, moving well uh, at this point mm-hmm. in time, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, so we are seeing um, a good progress. I would say so. We don't see any further surprises there. It's 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 progressing well. Perfect, perfect. And on the review front, um, you know, if you could. Uh, also, give some sense of the balance sheet today. You know, what what is our debt position today, and uh, what are the receivables uh, that are still pending, and any milestones that we see coming up in the next, let's say, one year, where some of these receivables would be realized. Uh, on the front of our borrowing, mm-hmm. we are at uh, 273 crores borrowing as of 31st December 22. This is gross. Yeah, this is uh, the gross borrowing that we have, mm-hmm. uh, both from external and our internal, uh, uh, like, affiliate arrangement. Right. And uh, this number was uh, 193 crores as of March 22, so we have reduced uh, borrowing by about 20-odd uh, crores. Mm-hmm. And if you look at the September 22 numbers, we have reduced the borrowing by about 800 million INR. Very good. Correct. Yeah. So this is on the front of our uh, uh, borrowing. And uh, like when we look at our receivables position, mm-hmm. uh, we have uh, like receivables of uh, 20.74 billion INR as of 31st December 22. Mm-hmm. And uh, this number as of March 22 was 23.946 billion. We have improved upon our uh, uh, receivable position as well. Understood, understood. And uh, and uh, any sense? I mean, uh, on how much we could expect in the next one year? Is it thirty percent, forty percent? Just an idea. I mean, this is only one year future. What I can say uh, in terms of the next uh, three quarter, four quarters, we expect that the majority of the work that we will do on the FGD projects mm-hmm. is on site work, mm-hmm. and we expect to collect majority of the retention payments on the FGD projects in the next uh, three to four quarters. So okay. that that uh, that is what we see because most of the supplies are done now. It's pretty much the site works. Understood. Understood. On on the on the projects that have uh, in the previous backlog, of course, we have the new projects. Uh, we we have we will start to see them in the next uh, six to seven months, but not in this current year. Understood, sir. Understood. Actually, uh, one thing that I must uh, you know congratulate the management on is that you kind of manage your costs pretty well, and that's how you uh, brought it down. Uh, this one last question for mine. What would be the contribution of services in our revenue? Uh, in the presentation, you've given the order book breakdown, uh, saying how much is services and how much is new bill. But uh, how much is it in the revenues today out of the um, 500 odd crores of revenues that we have done? Uh, this uh, number uh, is the percentage terms I can share with you. Yes, please. Uh, in this quarter, we have done a total revenue of about 5.3 billion. And mm-hmm. Uh, the services have been in the proportion of almost about 33, 32 percent. Understood. Understood. And last year, this was how much? This roughly. Uh, last year, uh-huh. like uh, this was, uh, I would say, a shade lower. So I would not have exact number right yeah. now, but no one. Uh, the indicative number will be about 25 percent. 
20 percent. So there is a significant um, revenue that we have done uh, in this current quarter, which is, in my view, one of the best that we have done uh, in in service revenues. Mm-hmm. So it has been an exceptional quarter on on the performances of services. So it's, it, that that portion of business is the core services is doing quite well. Got it. And in Durgapur now, have we finished whatever restructuring we have to do, or do we still expect uh, any more restructuring in Durgapur? So I would say that uh, the majority of the action uh, done. Um, now, it, they, in the last year, what we have seen against our expected load on the factory, um, since we had lower levels of inventory and high material inflation, we lost mm-hmm. out some bits to the competition who had larger inventory in the factory. Mm-hmm. So this year now we have to catch up as the material prices stabilize. We are working on a strategy to load the factory, but at this point in time, um, I would say that the book and bill is going to be very crucial to monitor the performance very closely. So we are monitoring that very closely. That is the last part of the under liquidation today in the numbers. Mm-hmm. And uh, we want to retain the competence and the capacity so that as we get back the load, uh, that is what you would see as the under liquidation that is impacting, whereas the SGM day is lower for um, uh, uh, that we have done. However, the under liquidation currently is what we have seen hurting us. But we have reached at a point where, you know, further action without compromising and competency is a challenge. So I think the trick is on how far, of how fast are we able to uh, bring others to fill the shop. Got it. Got it. Uh, understood. Understood. Thank you very much. I'll get back in line. Thank you. So uh, I just clarify, it is about in the last uh, year, same quarter, the service, uh, clean service revenue was about 18 to 19 percent. And this year, uh, there's about 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, uh, in your opening remark, you said that the turnaround of GDP and operation is taking longer than expected. So can you give some outlook as to by when do you expect the business to turn around or by when at least uh, you expect to go a bit the positive? I would say that the leading indicators will be for this will be for um, We have done the optimization of the capacity. And uh, I would say that you should pro- monitor the progress of order intake. Currently, we are falling short on the orders. And um, as we see the orders progressing, uh, considering the lead time typically of the orders uh, is what I think you will have to monitor quarter on quarter. We, uh, we would not make any forward-looking statements. Okay. And sir, w- uh, one more question uh, regarding the incident at Solapur. Uh, can you uh, give some comment as to what are the implications going forward, uh, whether all the provisions have been done? Yes, all the provisions have been done. Um, and um, after the provisions, uh, we now have to start the, we, we are now in the process of the surveys have been done. Uh, the final survey concluded in the current quarter. Therefore, you see the annual hit. Uh, which we have announced uh, in the today's results. That is the update that we have had from the previous. So now we have booked all the costs that are required uh, to be booked on the on the project in the provisions. As we now make progress and recover the money from the insurance, we will, we will uh, uh, in the year's time, as we will execute the project, we will start claiming with the insurance and with the, uh, and and make progress on the project. So the provisions have been done. It's about now making progress, investing money, and then recovering. From the insurance is what we have to do as we as we go forward. Okay, okay, sir, got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As a reminder to participants, kindly press star one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Mohit Kumar from Dam Capital. Kindly proceed. Yeah. Good evening, sir. Uh, the first question is on the thermal pipeline. We understand thermal pipeline is improving materially. As you stand today, there is roughly around 7 to 8 gigawatt of water which is which you open. 
uh, does it, uh, and and we of course expect the BHL to be in a larger share of order. Does it bode? Uh, does it bode well for our order outlook? So the number that I mentioned, um, seven gigawatt was a, in the last year the orders of FGD versus that we have seen about twenty gigawatts of orders of FGD in the current year. And um, I know, sir, sorry to interrupt, but my question was uh, primarily on the on the thermal, you know, thermal uh, BTG order. Yeah. Yeah, so on the on the BTG, we are still evaluating the participation. Um, and yes, today uh, we we will uh, we will uh, announce. Pro- we are we are uh, working on the opportunities. Um, but at this point, it's too early for me to to comment. Those are uh, those are still in uh, early stages of discussions with the customers. Understood, sir. Uh, <laughs> secondly, sir, uh, the, on the FGD side, uh, of course. Uh, the, there is some delay, uh, but how do you expect it to pan in next 12 to 18 months? Given that uh, the first uh, timeline, if I remember correctly, is 31st December 24, and second is 25, third is 26. So I think uh, this is the time. Uh, so if I 24 should should see healthy order for LGD side. Is my understanding correct? So what we will do is we will make a comment on the market. What we have seen is even though the customers do decide the order. By the time they make the purchase order and they make the payments, we are seeing a cycle of nine months to a year. So the ordering, even if it happens, the customer makes the decision, places the purchase of purchase order, then they close the financial commitment and making the down payment. We are seeing a slightly longer cycle. And uh, the orders that we have booked so far, two of them, uh, we have booked them almost uh, after closing the deal in a period of about nine to 12 months. And so that is what we are a bit concerned of because the timelines have been extended. We see customers are still eager negotiating, taking offers, but by the time we see the cash coming into the books, it's taking a bit longer. So that's the overall context when we say the ordering is delayed. Overall market is intact. It is just that uh, we would have wished to have the entire ordering take in the year so that we could start converting it into revenue, but it is going to take longer for us to book and convert those orders in, in the context of what we were trying to explain in the earlier half. On the total project pipeline, I would ask Vinit uh, to step in. Vinit, maybe you want to just make a mention on the market of FGD as we still see. So, so still, uh, I'm looking at uh, 100 gigawatt uh, needs uh, to be ordered. Uh, roughly 110 gigawatt has been ordered, and another 110 gigawatt uh, remains to be ordered, which, which uh, I uh, translate as of 56,000 uh, crores. So that is uh, what needs to be done, and. As you correctly mentioned, you know, uh, as far as are concerned, the end date uh, where most of the plants are, uh, you know, is, is 26, you know, and it was, which we are considering uh, uh, in stock time period of uh, uh, logically, you know, start ordering 23 or 24 start ordering. But as per there is a delay, uh, customers are taking uh, their and as you know, uh, NTPC central utilities have really gone ahead, and mostly it would be the IP and the state utility customers, which which is take time, as uh, Prashant mentioned. You know, we are in this getting done with the PO and advance taking more time. And on the new FGD tenders, payment terms should be far better than than our legacy orders. Is that yeah, that, that is right. They are far better, and and clearly we have a strategy also to uh, look at uh, the cash security uh, with good margins and as uh, well. Last year, sir, you have signed an MOU with NTPC for reducing carbon intensity from NTPC's coal-fired units. Uh, is there something uh, likely to materialize over the next 12 to 18 months, or do you think it's just uh, at this point of time, at the exploratory stage? Yeah, it's early stage at this point in time, because this is towards the 2030, uh, we want to achieve certain outcomes in the long term. And uh, we are um, walking, uh, so initially we see some engineering our commitment maybe for a year, year and a half, where we will do some joint engineering uh, R&D work. And the deployment should happen only in uh, in two years. So it's a it's a great uh, investment towards um, 
creating a decarbonization strategy for the coal fired sector so we think it's a great opportunity and it is of course non exclusive so we have to also make sure that we deliver and we develop uh, uh, on that as we move forward so your estimate is right we will see it in in maybe two years um, more than the engineering that we will see as pilots it will take some time to evolve but it's it's the right direction towards the energy transition understood thank you and all the best thank you thank you thank you the next question is from the line of apurva bahadur from goldman sachs can you proceed hey hi sir thank you for the opportunity uh, so wanted to understand if we have quantified the potential opportunity from uh, this ex this uh, extension of the retirement age for plants which i think mop had notified uh, some time back so so do you expect large scale rnm uh, to be undertaken for for any life extensions and if yes and to what what size so if you look at the indian market vis-a-vis the global markets we anticipate that the in indian markets will remain flat which means that we will see maybe at the most we will not see a market going down it will be flat uh, even if and the 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 challenge that we are currently seeing with the customers they did not anticipate the demand and now because they have the demand they have not willing to shut down even for normal maintenance right. so certain ordering has been actually postponed so yes it should convert into upgrades um and uh, we do expect that in the mid term the upgrades will uh, come up so we need you want to add around the yeah, so, uh, so i think he was he was presenting to the uh, you know uh, yeah, the discussion which has taken place in the power ministry where power minister has advised the not to retire from go for revamping so so we we have that list to answer to your question you know we have a list of about 224 Uh, about 65 gigawatt where you know potentially there could be you know, and this would be mostly 210 so we are keep keeping a track of it uh, you know and uh, we we have already done uh, turbine upgrades in uh, two plants yes jitse konakbari and ntpc ramangalam well and you know uh, so so we we are back to answer and we we will be ready to uh, you know Meet the requirement, you know. So, what what would be the uh, capex, say, in uh, rupees crore, rupees million per megawatt that that we should typically associate with, say, a turbine upgrade? So, something which we are still working on. You know, it would depend. Uh, you know, it would not depend on the uh, on the fleets, depending on the you know type of machine. It will vary. You know. Okay, and sir, and and the list that you have for that 65 gigawatt, which is to be sort of upgraded, uh, is it mm-hmm. more towards the state-owned power plants, or or is it also for the with central and private power plants? No, no, it would be mostly state uh, and uh, central. It would not be IPP because most of the IPP units have come out, uh, uh, you know, in the region, and they are flat. So I would say it's mostly mostly state and. Uh, Okay, understood, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Manvira, an individual investor. Can you proceed? Well, thank you for the opportunity. I have a couple of questions. Uh, can you provide the segregation of orders inflow from FGD, steam service, hydro, and gas? we have already given that indication in the chart uh, for you to see uh, okay and do you think the decision of government to extend the emission deadline for coal fired plant has impacted the fgd order flow so yes i have uh, mentioned uh, earlier that we were expecting in the period 30 gigawatts to be ordered roughly and we have seen about 20 gigawatts being ordered so yes we are seeing that certain customers have not been in a hurry to uh, execute and based on the zones the timeline for even implementing the existing projects the amount of urgency that was there to earlier to get on the grid we are seeing certain delays uh, in 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 the 
ordering cycle. So yes, in the current year against the seven gigawatts last year, we see 20 gigawatts. So market has gone up, uh, but we were expecting 30 gigawatts, but it is 20 instead of 30. So not to the extent that we expected because of these uh, delays. Uh, and lastly, can you give us the uh, can you give us an update on the education front? So last year you had mentioned that the education in some of the projects is delayed, and which is impacting our profitability. So has the situation improved? Sorry, can you repeat the question? Uh, so last quarter you have mentioned that the education in some of the project is delayed, and which is impacting the profitability. So has the situation improved? Yeah, Raj, would you want to comment on overall execution? How much delays are you seeing in our digital project portfolio? Uh, yeah. And and what you're seeing in the current year in terms of milestones to be achieved? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> thanks, Prashant. So uh, good evening. Uh, we, uh, as such, for our FGD execution, we continue to uh, lead in terms of the milestone completion as far as our customers are concerned. Yes, we have seen impact on account of the uh, inflation and the supply chain disruptions. Uh, overall, there has been uh, a delay, which we have seen, uh, again, uh, cascading from the COVID-related delays. However, we have a strong line of sight for uh, many milestones to be achieved in this uh, uh, next uh, two to three quarters as prashant mentioned in the beginning and that would uh, really help us to secure our uh, uh, cash uh, on the retentions from the customer uh, okay so thank you that's it from my side thank you thank you the next question is from the line of vp rajesh from banyan capital can we proceed? Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so, first question on the uh, comment you made in your opening remarks about the relief that you're seeking from the ministry and the customers. Uh, could you elaborate on that? What kind of relief are you looking for and what's the potential timeline for any of that? Yeah, so the, the, if you look at the COVID wave one and COVID wave two in isolation, they are individual force measure events. But when you add the COVID wave one, COVID wave two, supply disruptions that continued, and then the hyperinflation that has happened subsequently because of supply chain disruptions uh, during the uh, conflict uh, in, in Europe, but the combined effect has had an impact on the projects to the tune of three to four years. And the normal indexation that is applied into projects is not adequate to cover this inflation. So we have represented to the ministry uh, and also to our customers to give a relief in terms of having an index that adequately covers this exceptional situation. This is not business as usual. And such a prolonged duration on a project site is not what was anticipated by anybody when we started the project. And this is on behalf of the industry and the sector, not for the company alone. And therefore, we have said that we need a special indexation and a relief uh, for these projects so that uh, the, the PVC can be applied with a special index and not the normal index for business as usual times. So that is what we have represented uh, uh, from the industry. And, and what's the uh, timeline of a potential resolution to this? Is it, uh, you know, a quarter or two or maybe a year? I think I would not be able to hazard a guess because it's in the end the government's uh, uh, area. So yes, we have made representation both to the government and customers. Maybe the customer may decide, maybe the government would decide, so we don't know. Uh, if some customers do decide, uh, that might come sooner. If the government decides something, it might come sooner, the government may not decide. So it's uncertain, but yes, it's, a, it's an exceptional situation being faced by the sector. And therefore, uh, I see that this is a problem across the sector that uh, people are representing to seek relief. Understood. And then on the F F C F G D business, um, you talked a lot about that the customers are not even you know, shutting down the plants for regular maintenance. But aren't they required uh, by compliance, etc., to you know put these things? There? Or you're saying just because the time period has been extended, they are going to wait till the very end to start doing these projects, which are required anyway. Correct. That's right. 
So there are two topics, right? One is the SDD, the second is services. And services, it's a short cycle business. And if you expect the customer would have done, say, an outage in, say, uh, in, say, December, January, or March, typically an area that we might want to do an outage. But if there is a big demand, and you have seen the tariff has actually gone as high as 20 rupees uh, or 16 rupees now on the exchange. So they would continue then not to stop the plant for the maintenance in that quarter, but push it out by a quarter. But if they do that for a quarter, then for that quarter, business is gone. So that impacts short term a movement of the quarter based on the demand. So in my view, that's um, that's temporary and that pushes the customers to delay their decision simply by a couple of quarters, but it impacts the short cycle business. But that's a revenue loss for us, right? Or is it the revenue? Correct. That's, that's, the, that's temporary, yes. They will eventually they'll have to catch up. And upgrades, we see the challenge that upgrades we have seen a big demand. Uh, in the inquiry, but then you've seen that okay, they are now deciding the timing of the upgrade, and you know, and when they want to commit to the capex, you've not seen a lot of decisions happen towards upgrade yet. But there is a big pipeline, and you've heard earlier in the previous question that even the government has now said uh, uh, several plants not to be retired in 2030. That is meaning that the up upgrade R and market should open up, uh, with, but we're just not seeing that converting into decision yet. And typically, I mean, our experience has been in the past, it takes a few years for an upgrade uh, opportunity to mature. So we are optimistic that in midterm, the upgrade market will uh, come back. Understood. Uh, and then last question, you know, what is the timeline for G parent company to divest its asset? I know uh, you have talked about it uh, several quarters ago, but if you can just refresh the timeline uh, again, please. Yeah, so G, uh, the announcement was in February for a 36 months period. Um, and that is where we are today. And I have no further update on that. So there are two aspects to it. One is about the uh, strategic direction of G wanting to exit. And the second was about um, uh, making the company independent in terms of technology, knowledge, etc. So on the, on the 36 months that I have said it's in public domain since February. And uh, the second area was the technology transfer, et cetera, which is on track. And um, uh, in terms of the FGD is concerned, we are now fully independent. And the other technologies, we have a roadmap in place to ensure that Jekyll has all the technology that it needs to be able to run uh, in, in the area of business that Jekyll would like to run. Okay, so February 22 is the starting point, is it, or 21? 22, uh, Kamna, that's 22, I think, yeah. 22, okay, thank you, and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Aditya Shah from Vikram Advisory, kindly continue. Um, sir, I wanted to check that, you know, I heard that uh, in December, on December 22, uh, we have a trade receivable of roughly around 2,000 crores. I wanted to know that, you know, how much of out of that is retention money and uh, uh, the timelines that you expect to receive that retention money. Uh, the second question is regarding what is the operating cash flow that we've made for the full nine months uh, this year? Yeah, uh, on the retention, like we have approximately about 80%. I have 50 feedback. As, uh, uh, retention of the total outstanding that we have. This I'm talking of the net uh, uh, receivable position after uh, like removing the provisions, provisions for total debt and liquid damages. And uh, uh, with regard so to as your... of March, it was as of March 22, the retention money that we expect to receive was around 1892 crores, right? Roughly. Yes, yes. So yes. out of 1892, how much of that is uh, right now? Uh, it is 16.4 billion, 1,644 crores. Okay, okay, okay. And when do we expect ourselves to receive that 1,600 crores? Uh, Prashant has already... So the average timeline, average timeline. So this, uh, we are like, uh, most of the projects are in the, like I would say, the commissioning and site activity stage. And as and when the milestones will get completed, these uh, payments will be collected. And we are looking at a substantial amount of collection in the coming two years. Okay, okay, that would that is helpful. And uh, the operating cash flow for nine months? 
the operating cash flow for nine months has been uh, we are positive 590 million cash flow and uh, if we consider the borrowings in fact also like the reduction in borrowing then the impact is 388 million all right all right thank you sir thank you participants if you wish to ask a question kindly press star 1 The next question is from the line of Ramesh Behra, an individual investor. Can we proceed? Hey, hi all. Uh, good evening. Uh, so, my question to management: like, uh, it's been a year now, and uh, we are not seeing any uh, informations or updates around the uh, promotion. Uh, did GPL management had a discussion with uh, G, the parent company, about uh, what exactly going on to protect retail investors' interest? or it's or some like the contact with you guys so yes as i said earlier there are two parts uh, to the announcement one part is related to where we are working together with ge on making the company independent in terms of capabilities knowledge and competency and technology transfer in the areas of business that jepil would want to continue and that portion we are in constant engagement with ge and we are on track as regards the other part of the announcement which is strategic in nature uh, which is at arms length and uh, on that portion of uh, ge of course will um, so ge is leading that and the announcement i don't have any further update on that so my question is that uh, are we are we are we in get in touch with them or what exactly uh, like you no know, uh, the future road map or what they are looking for all kind of the disclosure whenever they are going to make to the public Yes, as in as in when there is there is anything material or uh, update for sure we will update and disclose to the market. I have no information at this point in time that I am unable to disclose. Okay, uh, one more question. Like uh, I could see, like uh, I am invested from last six seven years in GPL. Okay, so basically what happening? Uh, GPL signed a deal on 20 December 2022 with NTPC uh, related to uh, uh, the coal fired business uh, to like you no. Know, uh, Uh, a long term uh, contract with ntpc but those kind of information not shared in uh, not disclosed in bsc nsc website and uh, you guys coming with uh, uh, those information on result uh, pdf or presentation why you have not sharing that information immediately to with the retail investors so i am not uh, clear about that can you repeat the question it's not clear to me so so basically the disclosures like it's not happening um, as uh, it was like uh, for ntpc deal or any orders we have received for last quarter those are actually uh, like uh, updating in the ppt presentation ppt and presenting to uh, investors so i just want to wonder uh, why this 23 december incident not uh, reported to a stock exchange there is no material information so i don't know which uh, uh, top which order you are referring to it's not order because the contract mu signed with uh, ntpc Ah, uh, the MOU. The MOU is is in the public domain, and it has been placed uh, in the uh, public domain. So it's in public domain. It's in GU website, but not in the public domain. So basically, yeah. the result so must be not go to the. It is. GU it is website. not material. It is not material uh, to the performance of the company. It's a technology uh, discussion with NTPC, and we don't see that it will have a material impact, as I explained earlier in the next couple of years. So from that point of view, this if, disclosure. If it goes the other way, like NTBC disclosed that information immediately in the stock exchange. So if if you go through the NTBC disclosure, you will get that information. Like they have assigned a MU to GPL. Okay. So I am bit worried, like how, like why uh, we are not disclosing this information. The similar way, the uh, the orders that we receive for this quarter, like uh, uh, September to December, those orders also are not disclosed in a timely manner. I don't agree with you there, sir. We are following all the. We have issued number one at least for the same. Sir, first number one. Any, number I, one. In front of the press uh, website, I couldn't see. Number any. one. Yeah, yeah. Number one. The press release was issued for this MOU. Number two. All the orders which are required to be disclosed are disclosed if they are material, and there is a materiality threshold, and we ensure that any topic that is required to be materially. disclose with disclose and the total order intake value as you can see 
it is disclosed so there is I don't no understand. What, what does mean that public domain are you referring bfi nic exchange as a public domain or it's a gpl uh, website so come on maybe you want to address uh, this question available in bpl website but not in uh, bfi nic exchange the investor likes us they are always looking for the information from exchange rather than the website so why not we are planning uh, on that way i couldn't see any disclosure around these particular orders in tape or uh, the execution of the projects we did for last quarter successfully those information not not at all uh, disclosing in bsc or nsc exchange we take the feedback and we will review in my view as i said there is no intention of not disclosing any topic that requires disclosure so far but we take this feedback and we will come back on that sure the one more question like uh, uh, around uh, uh, the turn around uh, sentence in the in the ppt like um, uh, what, what exactly went wrong like uh, if you compare to the business or covid scenario or other things the similar kind of industry or similar kind of companies are coming with robust result they are coming with robust uh, implementation for education and coming with uh, like a good amount of revenue for the quarter and what exactly went wrong for gpl why we are looking for a turn around for gpl so when we say the turn around it's a good question there are three areas that we have identified for g power india limited one area we knew that there is a challenge that there have not been very significant uh, new build orders in the past four years and therefore the come to pivot towards developing service business now as we have started to work towards service business we see a significant development in the service core orders but we have not seen any upgrade orders material at all in the current financial year so far so therefore the growth that we were anticipating from service it is not largely due to upgrades where we have not seen any upgrade orders we, we don't see the growth of replacing new build with service as a lever for growth has not moved it is moving in the right direction but not to the extent that we anticipated and it is largely due to upgrades the second area is on the fgds um uh, on the fgds again we have had an loi uh, for example and that is taking longer time uh, for converting into cash and order booking uh, for example anupur that we disclosed in december uh, last year it took almost 9 months for uh, materializing that order and receiving the down payment and similarly now in certain contracts where even if you are l1 it is taking a lot more time for the customer to materialize and convert that into order so if you see two years of order intake where we have had lower order intake the profitability of the company will depend on the revenue that comes from backlog so the speed with which we should have added the backlog we have not been able to add and today the backlog is flat so that is what is limiting for us to turn around faster than we anticipated and largely driven by the uh, the market which is not has as we expected so it is largely coming from fgd and upgrades core we see good progress and it is moving the second lever that we had said uh, was to move towards non ep uh, and epc that is on track and the third lever we had said was we will add more and more private customers so that we have flexibility of cash terms uh, and lesser retentions that portion is on track however is that compensating for the break even volume that we are able to move into a profitable zone and the order cycle to convert into revenue that is taking slightly longer the, the final question is like what exactly the market share we are uh, we are looking for in gt order yeah uh, uh, that's a good question uh, we need uh, can you please clarify uh, my question is not yet and yeah, again please. like uh, from past two years like i think the funds are always saying like it's a lower intake orders if that is the case why we are not expanding our uh, uh, like no uh, participation in the fgd uh, in other areas rather than only limited to few customers okay so the first question uh, you know we we are targeting uh, market share of around 10 to 12 percent in terms of uh, gigawatt and uh, we uh, you know we we are looking uh, if, I, if i remember this was like 18 to 19 earlier if you know it is it is it is yeah yeah it is yeah, yeah. yeah. right but you know now now as we are moving more towards uh, a great utility customer 
So, and, and as you mentioned, we are looking at uh, select uh, select customers and cash secretive days. So, for that reason, uh, you know, we we are targeting uh, this. Uh, yeah. And we we are are we, are we looking the other opportunities? Yeah, like, we are we are yeah we are trying to uh, you know in some cases we are bidding uh, on uh, EPC basis on EPC basis so it's going to be a mix and some cases also trying to partners in order to our uh, you know access to the market. We are working on it. So what you have done, just to summarize what Nita said, what you have done is you have you know the entire 110 gigawatt that will be ordered in the next two to three years. Of that, we have categorized the into state IPP. Central is largely done with MPTC ordering. It's all over. So it's largely not state and private IPP. On the state, we are not going after every state because we cannot uh, uh, take terms which are not cash accretive or margin accretive uh, and and uh, increase the stress on working capital for the company. So, in the, so therefore, we are being selective in the opportunities that we think will be cash accretive, margin accretive to the company. Therefore, we are doing a combination of EP and EPC, and this strategy is working very well so far. The new orders that we have taken, uh, there we see a, a good uh, execution uh, on the two EP orders and one industrial order that we have so far, we are seeing that the execution has been very stable so far, and uh, we have been able to control the outcome very well. So all the learnings that we have learned in the past, that part of the strategy is working quite well. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Danish Mystery from Investor First Advisors. Can you proceed? Hello, yeah, uh, thank you for taking my question again. I have just one question. Uh, you mentioned that essentially, you know, power plants are running at full tilt and uh, given that they have the proper demand and everything, uh, that, uh, so do you see actually the services business picking up from here, given that if you run a machine for long, uh, it would need service, just asking from a very layman's perspective. Thank you. Yeah, so there are two parts to the business. One is the core services, one is the upgrade business. So what we have experienced so far, the core services over a period of a year, it balances out. You know, at times the customers have an annual budget and in the end, somewhere during the year, if it is pushed from one quarter to the other, it balances out. So uh, I will uh, uh, lead on to Vinny to comment in terms of actual numbers. Uh, what we saw in the core services due to this uh, in the market or from our expectations so far versus actual landing number in the market in core services. On the upgrade, typically it's a large uh, cycle capex where the customer also needs an approval from the regulator and therefore the process takes over two to three years and it is very lumpy. You get either a big one or you don't get anything for a uh, time. So that's lumpiness in the, in, the, in the upgrades market and it is not smooth. Uh, overall, on an annual basis, uh, the market, is, if I have to split, is roughly about 70-80% uh, core to 20-30% in upgrade. Uh, that is how uh, the market is played. So we need, if you want to comment on the market of core last year versus this year, and uh, something yeah. on upgrades. So yeah, so Prashant, uh, I would say for the market, more or less has been uh, the same level, you know, for the core services. It has maintained the, uh, you know, so not not major major, you know, this, uh, there has been some uh, increase. Uh, there has not. Significant, more or less, you know, payment of the increment for the market. But we have shown uh, we we have, uh, as you mentioned, we are looking at uh, double-digit growth uh, by the end of this year. Got it. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, before we close, I wanted Kamna to update on the disclosure uh, topic. That question, Kamna, uh, would you please take up the question? Of course, we consider the feedback. And we will see if we can improve uh, the disclosures. But uh, come out, you know, to respond. Yeah. Am I audible? Yes. Okay. Uh, so, sir, uh, the company uh, makes all the disclosures in compliance with the listing regulations. Additionally, the company also has a policy, uh, and that policy is policy for determination of materiality of events or information. And whenever we have we get any information, we we review it from qualitative and quantitative perspective. And uh, if it meets those uh, thresholds, then we intimate. 
and uh, uh, whatever disclosures the company has done have been done uh, in compliance with the set policy okay thank you vamnam thank you has there no further questions i hand the conference over to mr prashant jain for closing comments thank you all for joining the call today and i would like to thank you all on behalf of my team uh, thank you and have a good evening thank you on behalf of g power india limited that concludes this conference thank you for joining us you may now disconnect your line